Hello everybody, this is Sheila Aliens. Today is September 10th, 2011. And this is a response to a video posted by Rachel who had some questions for me that weren't answered in the interview that I did recently. So, no problem. And here we go. Hey everyone, this is Rachel, and I have a few questions for Sheila Aliens. I am a subscriber to her channel, a fairly new subscriber, and I um, would like to know a bit more about her. And I've heard two interviews with her already, but um, I, I pretty much missed most of it. I caught the end of uh, her last interview, and it was pretty awesome, so really enjoyed it. And I actually have some questions here, like I said, for her. So I'm going to begin uh, right now. Question number one, when did your fascination with aliens and other phenomena begin? I've been interested in paranormal um, ever since I can remember. So growing up, I was always fascinated by everything to do with paranormal. But the aliens, those kind of scared me. But I became more interested in those when I was about 1920. Question number two. Can you tell us about the first time you saw a UFO, and more specifically, how did you react? The first time I saw a UFO was in Sierra Vista, Arizona, which is where I grew up. And me and some friends were out, and we had pulled over inside the road somewhere in the middle of the desert, because that's what you do in Sierra Vista. And um, there was a light floating around above us, and it was obviously a craft of some sort, but I couldn't make it out. But we noticed that if you thought to the craft that you wanted it to come towards you, then it started to come towards you. So I thought that was pretty cool. We were just like, whoa. And, you know, we got in the car and left, but um, I wasn't scared or anything. I just thought it was interesting how this light was just kind of wandering around. It could have been a drone for all I know, some type of military drone, but it seemed to be reacting to our thoughts. I could be wrong, but I've never been scared during a sighting. Never. Question number three. I heard you mention something about your mother possibly having some sort of connection with aliens. Can you tell us more about this, and how does she feel about it today? Well, my mom just recently came to the revelation that possibly something strange happened to her in the 80s regarding aliens. And this is all just possible, you know, we don't know for sure. Um, but in the 80s, before she had my sister, who was older than me, she was pregnant with another baby. But three months into the pregnancy, the baby just wasn't there anymore. And she didn't have the baby, obviously, so she just wasn't pregnant anymore. And she doesn't know what happened because she didn't have a miscarriage or anything. And, of course, there could be a medical explanation for that. It just depends on how you interpret what happened and what you believe. I think that's really strange, but she just, it just dawned on her recently when she was seeing some type of documentary on TV about the same situation happening to other women in the 80s, where they just lost their pregnancy with no explanation at all. The baby's just gone. So I don't know if there was some type of hybrid program going on during the, during that time or what, but I believe she has some connection to aliens. The, all the strangeness comes from my mom's side, for sure. And we just seem to be in touch with the paranormal and visited, visited by things that are paranormal. And I get that from her. And I think she inadvertently named me Sheila, <laughs> which backwards spells aliens in a way. But my sister's name is Melanie, which, if you jumble up the letters, spells me alien. So that was totally subconscious on my mom's part. Question number four. How does your family feel or think about all the um, attention your YouTube channel is receiving? My family is always supportive of me no matter what I'm doing. So as far as my YouTube channel goes, they're proud of me. And 
it's just cool when I get mentioned on something like Glenn Beck show I can tell my dad because he can relate to that because he knows who Glenn Beck is and stuff like that so they think it's cool um, and like I said they're supportive of me regardless of what I do so it's pretty awesome do you have any skeptics in your family and if yes do they ridicule you I suppose my dad would be the skeptic of the family. Um, he doesn't talk much about it in depth. And I think he's just a closet believer. <laughs> but no, no ridicule at all. At most, I think that they think it's cute, the whole alien UFO hunting thing. And they know I'm not full of crap because my own sightings have made it to the local news channels and stuff, so... There's been a lot of sightings in Tucson for UFOs, mass sightings, in 2010 that made the local news that had nothing to do with me. So there's definitely something going on here, and there's no ridicule from my family, though. Question number six. How do you deal with any negative attention you may get from all of this? Well, I am human, or at least part human, and... I have feelings like anybody else, so I just try not to acknowledge the hate when it comes my way. And I do block people if they're just being vindictive and saying hurtful things to me. And people try to say that I, you know, I'm not allowing free speech, but I totally believe in free speech, and that's what their YouTube channel is for. And they can go make a video if they're that concerned about me, then they can make a video bashing me, which they do, some people. That's okay. I just don't have to put up with the harassment on my channel. I don't think so. Just like anybody else, it gets to me, it can hurt my feelings and stuff like that. So I just don't lend it any more attention than it deserves, which is none. Question number seven. What makes you a qualified paranormal investigator? I'm not so sure if I am a qualified paranormal investigator, but anybody who wants to be one automatically is if they say they are, you know. Um, what makes me qualified? I have some experience with professional ghost hunting groups. I've gone out with them in different parts of Arizona, and we have professional equipment and everything, so I don't know. I'm very professional when I go out and do that. I don't have... I'm not religious or anything. Not that I have a problem with religion at all, but I'm just, I'm spiritual, but I don't impose my own beliefs upon the situation at hand, in my opinion. And I just kind of let it happen as it does. And I seem to have weird experiences without even trying. If that makes me qualified, I don't know. But I know a lot about cameras and computers, if that helps. <laughs> if I were trying to say how I qualify for paranormal investigating, I would definitely include that. And I love... I can spend hours reviewing the content afterwards, to listening to the audio and looking at the video, like, frame by frame if I have to, to find if there's anything there. So I guess that would make me qualified in that aspect. Question number eight. If you could go to the moon and were allowed to bring one person... Who would it be, and why? Did you know that they have plans to build a hotel on the moon? That would be my mom, because she's the only family member or close friend that I have who would even be interested in going, I'm sure. Um, but she would really be interested in going, I know. She would love to. So I would definitely bring my mom. As for the hotel on the moon, I did not know about that. I'll be looking into that. I did know something about Domino's Pizza putting a, a pizza shop on the moon. I don't know what kind of time frame they're looking at, but that sounds interesting. I myself would be scared as hell to go to the moon. That's all I know. <laughs> what do you like to do when you have time off? I spend a lot of time online, but when I'm not doing that, I still I do UFO hunt 
I am currently in between cameras at the moment. I'm about to get a new one, so that should be exciting. And I'm also waiting for an adapter to arrive so I can put the video from the cameras onto the computer again because my other one broke. And I just got a night vision scope, like a pretty nice one, um, from a friend. So I've been using that at night to stargaze and stuff, and it's awesome. And I'm going to try to attach a camera to that somehow. But it's not Generation 3 night vision or anything, but it's pretty cool. So I do a lot of stargazing and stuff like that. And I listen to dubstep all the time. Number 11. Why cats? How many cats do you have and what are their names? <laughs> I have cats too, if you can hear them in the background. Well... I just love cats, and I think they are aliens. I think that much is obvious, but this guy right here, his name was Remy, and I was just fostering him, and I found him a home, but he's a good example for how cats are aliens. And my kitty's names are Panda and Alien, and Alien, I spell kind of fancy, it's A-L-I-E-N, with a little squiggly tail at the end. And she's a year and a half, and her brother Panda is about 12 years old, maybe? He's kind of older, but she keeps him young, and this is just a video of her poning him hardcore. So... She definitely kicks his butt. Number 12. Have you ever seen the musical Cats? If yes, what did you think? <laughs> no, I can't say that I have seen the musical Cats. I know some of the songs from when I was in choir in school, but it's not really my type of movie. I don't really like musicals. I mean, I like the Rocky Horror Picture Show, but Cats definitely not my type of movie. Question number 13. You like to pair up your videos with dubstep. I was wondering if you have a favorite song that is not dubstep and would be a surprise to all of us. I definitely have a lot of songs that are not dubstep that are my favorite. And in my older UFO videos, I used a bunch of different types of music before I knew what dubstep was. For example, I love the band Peeping Tom, specifically one of their songs called How You Feelin', as well as Collide, the artist Collide, and Isley, the band. I'll just go ahead and play a few samples of those artists to give you an idea. I have a pretty wide variety of music that I like. So that's just three examples of some of my favorite songs of all time. And that was How You Feelin' by Peeping Tom, Inside by Collide, and Brightly Wound by Isley. And I guess one that would surprise people would be Isley. They, they're a really sweet band. I mean, they have like a sweet little sound and sweet lyrics and very innocent. So, I don't know. I really love their music. Question number 14. Who would you prefer to party with? Alf, E.T., or Dreism, your subscriber? 
between Alf, E.T., or Drea? Of course I'd pick Drea. First of all, Alf always disturbed me. I don't like that fool, and I think he eats cats or something, but he's a fool. I don't like him. E.T., um... If I ever saw that movie, I don't remember and I don't care to. It's an ugly looking alien. But of course I want to party with Drea. She seems like a whole bunch of fun. <laughs> Question number 15. Did you think that when you started your YouTube channel that it would turn out to be the su success that it is today? No, not at all. I didn't think it would turn into what it has turned into. Um, I started off just with my UFO videos, just straight up purely me hunting UFOs, but I kind of have evolved into other things like, I guess you could say a truther or whatever. I'm just into all kinds of stuff as far as alternative news media goes. So I guess I kind of branched off in that way. Just, it just happened. I didn't expect it to happen, and I don't know why I get so many views, but it's pretty cool. And no, I never never would have thought it would go this direction but it's cool by me question number 16 what does the future hold for Sheila aliens any plans or new projects in mind no I mean I have no projects that I'm working on or anything um, I'm just going with the flow just presenting information that I find interesting enough to present to people and that's it I don't have any plans at all as far as my channel goes or anything Question 17. What will you be for Halloween this year? Well, I'm glad you asked, actually. I am going to be anonymous. These guys right here. And the last one. What's your favorite candy bar? <laughs> I have to say, I guess, Twix or Snickers. So there you have it. Just a couple questions for you that uh, I was curious about. Anyway, if you don't answer, it's all good. <laughs> I'm sure someone will. Well, thank you, Rachel, for even asking the questions. I don't know. It feels pretty cool to have somebody care enough about what I'm doing or what I'm about to ask those questions. So I do appreciate that. And very cool. Thank you so much. Meow.